Down to Earth is Asia's premier fortnightly on politics of environment and development assisted by the Centre for Science and Environment and published from New Delhi, India. It was started in 1992 by environmentalist Anil Agarwal, with a commitment to make people aware of the challenges of environment and development and to create informed change agents. Sunita Narain a leading Indian environmentalist and Director General of the Centre for Science and Environment is editor of this fortnightly magazine. The intent of the magazine is to present timely news, research, analyses and provide insight into grassroots-based environmental struggles that were only being sporadically covered in books and research-based publications. A key intent is to bridge the communication gap between science and policy, and between decision makers and practitioners across the wide environment development spectrum. The fortnightly format was created specifically to supplement the research, analyses and documentation efforts that were being undertaken by its associated organization, Center for Science and Environment, founded also by the late Anil Agarwal in 1980. The objective, founding principles of the magazine, as envisioned in the first editorial, was to fill a critical information gap, rather than capture a share of the information market, and to serve as an enabler in a chaotic world. Reportage and analysis is geared to enable an increasingly young India with information and analysis from villages, fields, factories and labs, places where the mainstream media has vacated. DTE reports everything from two lenses, the environmental challenge of development, as well as the development challenge of the environment. The world's top experts and a network of over 60 correspondents report for the digital platforms. With nearly 2 million page views a month, the web edition covers all the continents. In October 2016, Down to Earth launched a Hindi edition of the magazine, with exclusive coverage as well as repurposed content from DTE English edition. The Hindi edition was launched to serve a long-standing need to serve the large Hindi-speaking audiences in the country, especially in the Hindi-speaking heartland, and to begin a conversation on environment, development and sustainability concerns with them. The magazine has been awarded for its cutting-edge reportage, and its writers have won many national and international fellowships. Down to Earth Books is the magazine's publishing wing. It brings out two annuals, State of India's Environment and State of India's Environment in Figures. This is the country's only annual survey on environment. The later one is a completely data-driven annual statement on State of India's Environment published every World Environment Day. Down to Earth has become a reading habit in at least 600 districts of the country. More than any other Indian newspaper or magazine. The magazine's sphere of influence is not limited to India. Readers across the world rely on Down to Earth for a view from Asia on the critical issues of human existence. Its founder editor Anil Agarwal said, Ideas are like time bombs. You never know when someone will read it and make change. The idea will then explode. Topic. Special reports published by Down to Earth DTE reports from places ignored by the mainstream to bring regional stories to the national spotlight. Here are few special reports and cover stories published by Down to Earth. Topic: Endosulfan Test 2001. Tested endosulfan traces in environmental and human samples from Padre village in Kasaragod district of Kerala. 
an unusually large number of health anomalies reported from a single village. These ranged from cancer to physical deformities and mental to neurological disorders. Endosulfan was aerially sprayed in the cashew plantations in the area. High traces of endosulfan was found in every sample after the test results were released the Union government ordered its own scientific institutions to study the health problems. The National Institute of Occupational Health in Ahmedabad confirmed endosulfan was the cause of poisoning. Union Agriculture Ministry banned use of endosulfan in Kerala in 2005. Topic: <inaudible> Pesticides in bottled water, 2003. Analyzed pesticide residues in bottled water that was being sold in Indian markets at a premium and without regulations. Samples tested contained a cocktail of pesticide residues. Most of the samples contained as many as five different pesticide residues, in levels far exceeding the standards specified as safe for drinking water. Health Ministry proposed mandatory regulations. India's first ever bottled water standard promulgated. Every bottle of water sold in the market must meet the standards. The norms state that pesticide residues considered individually should not be more than 0.0001 mg, litre, while total pesticide residues were capped at not more than 0.0005 mg, litre. Pesticides in soft drinks, 2003 and 2006 Analyzed pesticide residues in soft drinks, another sector left unregulated. High levels of toxic pesticides and insecticides, high enough to damage the nervous system and reproductive system, and cause cancer, birth defects, and disruption of the immune system. The government formed a joint parliamentary committee, only the fourth in independent India and the first on health and safety of Indians. The committee report vindicated the CSE findings and said it is prudent to seek complete freedom from pesticide residues in sweetened aerated water. After prevaricating for five years, the Union Health Ministry was forced to set up in soft drinks, world's first ever. Pesticides in Punjab, 2005 Analyzed pesticide residues in blood samples of farmers in Punjab, where pesticides are commonly used in agriculture. Deadly cocktails of 6 to 13 pesticides found in all the blood samples tested. The Punjab government ordered a study and immediate health remediation measures. Later, the government formulated organic farming policy for the area. Recently, the government has asked Indian Council of Medical Research to look into the health concerns in the region and suggest solutions. Topic: Tests in 2009. Topic. Trans fats in cooking oil, February Branded edible oils are full of unhealthy trans fats. The results showed trans fats in seven leading Vanaspati brands were 5 to 12 times the 2% standard set by Denmark. Since the release of this study several government agencies took steps to set standards for trans fats in cooking oil. The Union Health Ministry is finalizing draft standards for trans fats to be notified under PFA. Bureau of Indian Standards is in advanced stages of finalizing a standard. 
The Food Safety and Standards Authority of India has also got involved in the process of regulating trans fats in edible oils. <laughs> Lead in paints, August The CSE laboratory tested leading brands. Young Children King steps to remove lead from their household paints. Industry associations also contacted CSE, saying that they favored removal of lead from paints used in houses and in paints children are likely to come in contact with. BIS is in advanced stages of finalizing a mandatory standard. Topic. Contamination in Bhopal, December For more than 25 years, the Union Carbide UCIL factory has been contaminating the land and water of Bhopal. Center for Science and Environment CSE tested water and soil samples from in and around the factory. High concentrations of pesticides and heavy metals found inside the factory as well as in the groundwater outside. Tests showed groundwater in areas even 3 km from the factory contained almost 40 times more pesticides than Indian standards permitted. The Central Pollution Control Board, which had collected samples with CSE, also confirmed the contamination. This was the first ever study that revealed continued contamination of surrounding areas from waste stored at the UCIL factory. This led to the reopening of the Bhopal case and for the first time there was serious focus on the cleanup. The Government of India has ordered cleaning up of the site and asked different institutions to prepare plans for remediation. Renewed the liability debate, senior union ministers said Dow Chemicals should be held liable for the cleanup. Topic: <laughs> Tests in 2010. Topic: <laughs> Phthalate, January. Tested presence of phthalate, a highly toxic chemical, in toys sold in the Indian market. These chemicals are not regulated or monitored by the government. Lab results showed over 45% of the samples exceeded the internationally accepted safe limit for phthalate. India has no standards. In a meeting the Joint Secretary of Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion said that the Prime Minister's office was taking a keen interest in setting standards for toys. The Department of Consumer Affairs issued a draft notification to make it mandatory for all toy manufacturers to register with Bureau of Indian Standards. The BIS certificate will ensure that companies registered with BIS will get tested in the BIS-recognized labs. BIS is also finalizing the mandatory standards for phthalate in toys. Topic. Antibiotics in honey, September The CSE laboratory tested leading brands. Tests found high levels of antibiotics from the banned chloramphenicol to broad spectrum ciprofloxacin and erythromycin in almost all brands sold in the market. The leading Indian honey producers Dabur, Badianath, Patanjali Ayurveda, Khadi, Himalaya had two four antibiotics in their products, much above the stipulated standards. Two foreign brands, an Australian and a Swiss, had antibiotics levels not permissible in their own countries. <laughs> Power plants in Singrauli 
Singrauli, the powerhouse of India with massive coal reserves and many thermal power plants, should have been prosperous. But it is poor and polluted. People complain of unexplained ailments. An investigation by Center for Science and Environment found that mercury, a deadly toxin in coal, is slowly entering people's homes, food, water and even blood. Down to Earth reported on the lab findings and how mercury affects people and environment. Topic: <laughs> Protests against garbage dumping in Thiruvanthapuram, Kerala. As Kerala cities dump their waste in the countryside, people in the villages hit back. An unresolved civic problem of decades compounded by topography and demography has now turned gram panchayats against municipalities and urban bodies against the state government. Here is a report by Down to Earth from Tiruvananthapuram. Right over bamboo Five years after it was implemented, the Forest Rights Act finally took root. Communities across the country rushed to claim rights over forests and their produce, particularly bamboo. But they faced challenges. Down to Earth reported from Odisha and Maharashtra to unfold the new battle in implementation of the Act. Topic. Antibiotics in chicken At a time when chicken consumption is at an all-time high in India, a study by Delhi non-profit Centre for Science and Environment showed that poultry meat could be churning out robust microbes that can render all antibiotics ineffective. Here is the DTE report on this study. Topic. Thermal power plants in India More than 70% of India's electricity is produced by coal-fired power plants. But most of them do not have modern technologies and use low-grade coal that is low on energy and high on waste found the CSE study. Down to Earth reported on the CSE study which covered 47 plants with a capacity of 54 gigawatts. Topic. Burden of disease in Punjab Down to Earth traveled to Punjab, one of India's most thriving and prosperous states. It found that the state had metamorphosed into the country's second highest disease burden state. It will be a challenge for the new government in Punjab to tackle increasing burden of disease that's plaguing the state. Read the report by DTE. Topic: Cape Town like water crisis. Down to Earth's analysis shows that at least 200 cities across the world are fast running out of water and 10 metropolitan cities are moving quickly towards day zero, from Cape Town to Bengaluru and Nairobi to Mexico City. Hundreds of cities across the world are on the verge of going completely dry. Read this special report. Topic. Storms in India An unprecedented storm season challenged India's scientific community. From February to May 2018, India has witnessed more than 44 storms in 16 states. About 423 people have been killed and over 785 people have been injured. This special report by Down to Earth demystified the science of storms and explained the causes behind the natural disaster. 
Topic genetically modified ingredients in food products In a first-of-its-kind study in India, the Center for Science and Environment CSE tested 65 food products available in the market for genetically modified GM ingredients. CSE found GM genes in 32% of the products, almost 80% of them imported. Read this report by DTE on CSE study The content of Down to Earth is for anyone interested in the environment and the politics behind it. Reporters of Down to Earth travel the length and breadth of the country to uncover the truth. Editors Page, Indian environmentalist Sunita Narain's take on government policies and their impact on the common man. Cover story, combines reportage and research. Front page, reports that expose the politics behind environment, science and development news, reports on events of public concern and environmental policies. Special report, articles and reports behind the news science and technology, advances in health and medicine, life, plant and atmospheric sciences, agriculture, geology, ecology, evolution, astrophysics and chemistry. Features, on history, food, initiatives and culture Crosscurrents, guest writer's viewpoint Review, books and films Media, a roundup on the public sphere Columns Patently absurd by Latha Jishnu Right to dissent by Latha Jishnu Civil lines by Richard Mahapatra <laughs>